Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway back recapping another commitment for K-State football. They've added Dominic Mitchell, a safety from Arizona. He becomes the 10th commit of the class, so K-State hits double digits uh, before we even get into the final 10 days of June, and we've kind of baked in that July 4th uh, deadline to see where K-State is at, and I think conservatively we we're saying yeah they you know might get to 12 by that point now it seems like if they they're not past 12 by the 4th of july you're going to be slightly disappointed uh, but dominic mitchell is an interesting addition for the 10th commitment of this class uh, a safety from phoenix and he came to k-state was hosted uh and it really liked what he saw now the the thing that people immediately asked about is, hey, K-State is his only real significant offer right now. A lot of the others that were in on Dominic Mitchell are like Ivy League schools, some of the service academies. Uh, I mean, UConn is really the only other notable name, but like UConn in football is just it's kind of sucking off of the notoriety of UConn basketball uh, to be relevant in people's minds. So explain the Dominic Mitchell thing off the bat, just because of the offers people are of course going to be concerned and worried about that. I think that there's not a ton to worry about because you know how picky case they is in the secondary specifically. So I, I think that you see Dominic Mitchell get offered at a camp and you kind of think to yourself, okay, like, that means that they definitely saw something. And I think that K-State really did because he was one of the major standouts of their first camp where a ton of offers went out. And I think that he was probably in that top two, top three group at the camp. So I, I think that that's something that you kind of see and you're like, okay, like what, what kind of went on there? But I think that when you see guys at camps that K-State hosts get offered, I think that that's kind of where you... I, I hate saying this as as the the recruiting person, but this is like a, a trust the staff kind of moment because when they see these guys at camps, it typically ends up working out well. I mean, Jack Fabris, camp guy, Jace Brown, camp guy, almost the entire offensive line have been guys that have camped. So I think that you kind of see that and you're like, okay, it, it, it makes sense. And, and I think that there were other power for uh, suitors kind of lurking for Dominic Mitchell, but I think that, Again, like we've seen with a few guys now, once K-State offered, they took the lead and kind of just suffocated every other team in the process. So I think that there probably were some other suitors and probably other teams that wanted to see him at camp. But once K-State offered and K-State had that relationship prior, because this wasn't just a, a one-off thing at a camp, and I think that that's kind of like a misconception at these camps that this is the first time that K-State has like seen them or talked to them for a lot of these guys, K-State is offering or is offering them uh, at the camp because they'd seen them work out previously and invited them to the camp. And Dominic Mitchell was another one where uh, Joe Klanerman went and saw him at his high school in the spring and saw him work out and, uh, and invited him to a camp. And then he sees him at the camp and then ends up offering him. And then from that moment on, it's game on. And then I compared it to, kind of just like it's more of a sprint than something that is kind of like a, a slow burn, kind of like the Lincoln Cure and Monterey Wilson uh, situations of the world, where this was a full-on sprint. Once, once Dominic Mitchell got offered, I had a pretty good feeling he would end up in the class because he was so fired up about getting the offer from K-State. They don't really think he gave anybody else kind of like the time of day post getting the offer. I think it's good to highlight for people that you, like what you said there. You know, this is not just, hey, he showed up to a camp randomly and they're like, oh, that guy looks like somebody we could offer. It's been it's been building. They they obviously have had interest for a while. And uh, yeah, it, it, we've seen it before with plenty of K-State recruits that uh, and, and other schools have the same situation play out where people around them realize, OK, they've built so much of a lead. I don't know what we're going to do here to get in and, and get what we need to do in this process. So K-State adds their 10th commit of the class. In terms of the type of player that they're getting in, in Dominic Mitchell, uh, what can you tell us there? I, I think that K-State's getting a really, really solid football player. I mean, you look at his highlights, and he kind of looks like the prototypical Jack safety, which 
I think is one of the hardest positions on the entire field to play at K-State. And it, it's where I think somebody on the board yesterday pointed out that they really enjoy K-State, like getting guys that have Ivy League offers. And I said, well, especially at the Jack safety, that's probably the, the spot that you would want a guy to have Ivy League offers because it's the hardest position on the field. I mean, it's literally called the star position at a lot of other places because you have to be so good at so many things. Like, that's why it's called the jack safety because you're the jack of all trades. And it's a hard position to play, especially early. But I think that with kind of the smarts and how athletic he is and how how he operates, I wouldn't be surprised if he's somebody that ends up seeing the field a little bit earlier at the jack safety. And like we saw Jack Fabris kind of do the same thing uh, this year. And he kind of reminds me a little bit of Jack Fabris in terms of how just solid he is. And I think that he's a guy that you're kind of going to look back on his career and he might be the player that probably overperforms his recruiting ranking uh, by the end of it. Yeah. And I mean, you, you can see in, in the, the film right there, like there's a lot to like about how he shows up on here. And obviously that's probably one of the things that caught K-State's eye. And now you think, okay, he's going to come and put it into practice. And it feels like a lot of those guys in the secondary that specifically Joe Klanderman has some, some say in and some like developmental process. Those guys have found ways to be on the field in some capacity early on. And, and not like meaningless action because like you talking about Jack Fabris, there was there were points early in the season last year where he was on the field and it's not like it was just like a, hey just go on out there to get out there and it feels like that's kind of been a repeated thing and obviously Joe Klanderman's proven himself over his first five years at K State but um, I think the more people dig into this one the more that there probably should be some excitement and interest about it. Yeah, I think the the one thing that really stands out to me is just how athletic he is and how well he can move and kind of move with leverage. And he seems to be a really, really good fit in the 3-3-5 because he kind of understands where he needs to be at safety. And he plays a little bit of strong safety, plays a little bit outside linebacker now, but will be probably that jack or strong safety role at K-State. So I, I'm... I'm really excited about this one. I think that, again, he's probably the one that he might not be the highest rated commit or even in like that top like four or five. But I think by the time it's all said and done, he's going to be the one that ends up out outperforming where he ends up being ranked, which well, I, I think you go ahead, which I, which I was going to say, which is something that I think that we're kind of seeing a lot in the secondary specifically. Yeah. Well, I think it just goes down to, I mean, you talk about Ivy League offers, the position he's going to play, like you have to be knowledgeable. I think it goes to show that, yes, you have to have the the physical traits and everything, and certainly uh, those are there with Dominic Mitchell, but you can also make up for a lot of that if you have a high-level understanding of the game and know where to be. I mean, think about yesterday uh, when we talked about one of the other commitments of the day, McGuire Richmond, like one of the things we talked about looking at him was you can just tell how smart of a football player he is based off of where he ends up on the field. And I, I think that's one of those things that we continue to see with K-State where the athleticism is getting better for the guys that they're bringing in, but also it seems like they're picking up more and more of the guys that already have the understanding of the game at a little bit of a higher level than what we'd seen you know, in the past or whatever other point in K-State football recruiting. Yeah, I think that's a really good point to highlight. And again, the physical traits are also there. I mean, Dominic Mitchell ran on the four fives at the K-State camp, so he's plenty fast enough. So I, I'm really intrigued to kind of see where his body goes because, again, he he's already 6'2", 200, so he could probably get in that 215, 220 range pretty easily. And I'm really excited about his physicality because, again, he really knows how to bring it and get his face in it and be really physical. And stop me if you've heard this before, but a case eight safety that's really long and can really run and can really cover. That's, that's crazy. They never do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's uh starting to kind of be what, and I just, I bring it up every time because I think it, it highlights, I mean, we're years past it now, so it's not as big of a deal. It's just kind of becoming the norm, but going out and just finding the the athletes that you think that can do something 
and then say, okay, we we also know that they have the knowledge to to back it up and put themselves in a good spot is just such a better way to do things than being like, okay, we need a safety. We need a corner. Let's go get one. And you end up with those, you know, those rival five, four, two stars or something at that position just to fill something out. Instead, it's, you know, K-State looks like the trendsetter in a lot of these. And, and these are guys that are coming in with immediate traits that you think can play at this level. Yeah. And I, I think that uh, the really thing to kind of remember is that K-State has a really good track record at camps on who they offer. And a lot of the guys that they offer at the camps sometimes end up being the guys that see the field quicker at quickest. I mean, we saw that again, can Nigel Thomas, Austin Romaine and Jack Fabris were the three freshmen that really saw the field a lot last year. And they were three guys that all camped during their uh, junior season. So I, I, or after their junior season. So I think that that's kind of something to keep in mind is that the, the camp offers, I think are kind of the, they get kind of overlooked a little bit because it, it is such a sprint, but it's something to really like notice when somebody gets offered at a camp and they end up committing because of the track record. No doubt about it. So there it is. Dominic Mitchell becomes the 10th member of the class of 2025 for K state as they hit double digits uh, before we get into the home stretch of June. And now we'll see uh, two weeks away from, the 4th of July, which is that kind of target date that uh, we've been throwing out there about what number is it going to be at that point in time. Uh, it seems like K-State probably going to be at least to 12. That was uh, the most common one through. And I think you, D.Y. and I, we've all said that uh, at different points. And then now it starts to be, can they touch 15? Is 15 going to be in reach? Uh, we'll see about that. And uh, if you want more on what's going on with K-State football recruiting, head over to On3, find K-State online, get locked in there, and also come back to the KSO YouTube tomorrow because Drew and I will preview the official visits that are taking place to K-State this weekend, including the big one of Lincoln Cure. But that will do it for today. Dominic Mitchell, a member of the 2025 class at K-State. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online.